I played Yu-Gi-Oh! to prove it's ridiculous. Let's see what Raran's opinion of Yu-Gi-Oh! is. I'm gonna play this game for 10 hours and I'm gonna do this to showcase to all of you how ridiculous this game ends up being. I have played- So, <laughs> so he must be magic content creator, right? He's MTG? Oh, Hearthstone. So he's gonna show everyone how ridiculous Yu-Gi-Oh! is from a Hearthstone player's perspective. Played this game previously for three hours and I went back to look at the footage and I couldn't tell you what the hell was happening. As someone who has barely played- Yeah, no shit, right? Like, Hearthstone has so much, much, like, so much easier visual clarity just because the cards themselves are very easy to understand. And also, you, you're able to kind of digest the information at a slower pace because of the mana system. Things go back and forth, right? Instead of Yu-Gi-Oh! where you're basically just wombo combo. It's average game is like three turns. Average game length is like three turns, if not like 2.5, right? It's it's a lot harder to understand what's going on in Yu-Gi-Oh, um, for sure. Just because there's just so much going on. Played Yu-Gi-Oh, the game has always kind of scared me. It's not your typical card game. In fact, it's the most different out of all of them that I have played. The yes. All those games, what do they have in common? All these games have a mana system. <laughs> All these games have other resources than card advantage. They're way different just from the offset. They have a timing. They have tempo. There is a concept of tempo in these games that is virtually non-existent in Yu-Gi-Oh. Tempo doesn't really exist in Yu-Gi-Oh. And what, what is tempo? Tempo is basically like efficiency of mana played right? Mana played per turn, the efficiency of it. If you're on turn three, you have three mana, right? Did you play three mana and how much did you, how much mana did you take away from your opponent, right? Did you play a three mana card that kills like a two mana card for them, right? That's like the concept of tempo in a very, 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 very small like use, like case, right? There's a, a matter of like timing and efficiency regarding like what you spent to get that card. Whereas in Yu-Gi-Oh, the only thing you need is a card in your hand. You just need the right card in your hand, which is already something that all these games do. But Yu-Gi-Oh, that's all it is. And so drawing cards is really important in Yu-Gi-Oh. And like, there is no real concept of tempo because everything happens on turn one and turn two. And then turn three, maybe they like kill. That's actually what I like about Yu-Gi-Oh being able to slap all the cards on the board and the biggest is the biggest appeal. I it's a different game. I like card games. Yu-Gi-Oh was my entry into card games. It was my gateway drug. And once I learned about Hearthstone, Legends of Runeterra, Magic, uh Pokémon, uh Weiss Schwartz, right? Uh Wickross. I I I love different card Digimon, Digimon trading card game. So good. I love card games in general. I want to do more content with more card games in the future. But, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! I will always have, like, a soft spot, sort of, for Yu-Gi-Oh! In that I grew up playing Yu-Gi-Oh! And that was, like, my entry. But, personally, I prefer mana. Personally, I prefer the concept of tempo. Personally, I prefer the concept of passing back turn by turn. Like, just look at the decks that I like playing in Yu-Gi-Oh! Right? The decks that I like playing in Yu-Gi-Oh! include Tier Limits and Sky Strikers. And that's about it. And the reason why is because, yes, Yu-Gi-Oh! is on average a three-turn game. But with Sky Strikers and Tier Limits, there's more back and forth. Because those decks focus on playing on your opponent's turn. And I like that. I like it when, when I can make it so that you're not just going to go wombo combo. Actually, you're going to have to like react to what I'm doing, right? And that opens up misplays, that opens up opportunities, opens up um, a lot of like cool moments, in my opinion, that Yu-Gi-Oh! usually doesn't really have. Because Sky Strikers is rogue, and Tier Limits, Tier Limits had a great time, and I very much enjoy playing Tier Limits, but now it's kind of like dying down a little bit. Right, and before tier limits, there wasn't that many decks like tier limits. So I like those kind of decks. Funny how you never played flu. Flu is yes, they play on your opponent's turn, but flu doesn't really do many different things. Flu just flips Dreaming Town, or they use map 
to summon the Robina into Eglin into uh, Ryza on the opponent's turn or into Avian. It's like, do I want to negate or do I want to bounce something? It's like the 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 number of things you could do with Flu is so limited. It's so boxy. It's very predictable. That's why I don't like Flu. Yes, they play on your opponent's turn, but themselves as an archetype, it's like turn one always looks pretty much always looks the same or tries to look the same. And then turn two on your opponent's turn, it looks very similar too. It's it's horrible to play. Tier steals priority, yes. And tier basically it's it's lucky, right? You have to mill the right cards. And you have to adjust to what you mill. And guess what? Your opponent has to adjust to what you mill too. I have played. The biggest difference being there's not really a mana resource system. You can nope. kind of just play cards if your cards allow you to. And not to mention yep. how long some of the card text actually is. Look at that. <laughs> just look at that. And imagine if he like pulled up Pendulum. Like if he pulled up a Pendulum card, dude. You would have two text boxes. You would have a text box over here. And this would still be the same length. This would still be the same late. No one plays that. No one. That doesn't matter. That's not what's being said, Suzaku. Look at the text. This is a whole ass paragraph versus this. This is two sentences. And this is like, this is one of the longer Hearthstone cards. This is a, like one of the longer like text I've seen on a Hearthstone card. I like duels where more intelligent decisions can be made. I dislike games with mana because the game doesn't start until many turns in, where Yu-Gi-Oh has both players shooting cards off at each other. But that's not the case. Like, mana and magic introduces so much variance between from game to game, and there are a lot of intelligent decisions to be made, and there's a lot of like intelligent deck building decisions to be made too. Like Games with mana, I'll say it, they're more fleshed out, and they're more enjoyable, they're, they have more depth to it than Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh is very straightforward, to the point where it's very frustrating. It's like, did I win the coin? There are a lot of metas where it just boils down to, did I win the coin flip? There are a lot of metas that boils down to, did I draw the out, right? In Magic, in games with mana, that's not... There are way more things involved than just that. In fact, Yu-Gi-Oh! makes itself seem like it's more complex because this text is f***ing ridiculous and trying to um, discern and understand like what the sequencing of events of this card, not, not this card in particular, but any Yu-Gi-Oh! card and how it interacts with others is kind of a mind f***. But overall, like, once you do have a good understanding and handle of that, like, the game itself is pretty simplistic. I'm a bit jaded towards mana because it wastes my time, in my opinion. Games are decided in the first few turns, but I'm playing cards anyway gives me the illusion of back and forth. I don't think so. I don't think games are decided in the first few turns in games with mana. Like, have you ever played, like, a blue deck or any kind of control deck? There's a blue-green deck, a Simic deck that was really strong at 1.2. You know, there's, a. Uh, there's a lot that goes on, and especially like with other games, like there's drafting too. Draft formats are so peak. Syntaxis being absolutely ridiculous on how a card can or cannot be affected by something is kind of unique to Yu-Gi-Oh. It is, and it's annoying. It doesn't. It doesn't make the game more deep. It's just like, did you know it or not? Do you know it or not? Did you understand it or not? Right. That's all it is with Yu-Gi-Oh! And like, once you do, once you feel the burn, and you're the type of person that's like, okay, I got burned by this in the past, I'm just not gonna get burned by it in the future, right? If you're that kind of person, then it's, that's it. Like, you already know arbitrarily how the game works, and you can play around it. That's it. There's no, there's nothing else after that. Is. From an outsider's perspective, Yu-Gi-Oh! seems like the most ridiculous card game that exists. And I want to yeah. see how ridiculous Yu-Gi-Oh! is. So I decided to play Yu-Gi-Oh! for 10 hours. And here mm. is what I found out. Chat, is there a video you guys would recommend on how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! Because I have played Yu-Gi-Oh! before, the first couple- How to play Yu-Gi-Oh! in three minutes? I've never seen this. We should watch this. 
hours were basically me relearning the game and I thought I would remember a lot of it but honestly I didn't remember really anything that has 1800 attack but no defense that's fine opponent is about to end her turn what made the top five cards to your deck and you can add an excavated spell <laughs> what is excavate <laughs> right Drop to your hand that is a keyword also excavate is like one of the few keywords in Yu-Gi-Oh I don't know what excavate means. What is happening? In the hopes you won't be as lost <laughs> as I was playing Yu-Gi-Oh, here are a couple important things to know. Yu-Gi-Oh uses different card types like monsters, spells, and traps, and they all go in a specific zone on the board. You okay. can normal summon a monster if its level is four or lower, but for higher level monsters, you can tribute summon by sending other monsters to the graveyard, or you can yep. use special methods that we'll see later in this video. The objective of the game is to reduce your opponent's life points to zero and send them to the shadow realm. But I can't emphasize True. this enough. This game is extremely complicated and there's a ton more. <laughs> Wait, what are we looking at? Are we looking at Dragon Link Blue Eyes or like Bestial Blue Eyes? Wait, that's kind of sick. Stuff that I didn't mention. Am I dumb because I play Hearthstone or is this game too complicated? I am still hella confused. This game is complicated. Don't worry about it. For the majority of the first hour, I spent a lot of my time in the. I feel like Yu-Gi-Oh has a lot of surface complexity, right? It is. It has a very high barrier of entry. There's a lot of surface complexity with Yu-Gi-Oh because you basically have to learn another f language in order to understand Yu-Gi-Oh. You have to understand very deeply like what a conditional is, right? And uh, the difference between when and if. When uh, colloquially, in regular conversation, when and if, like they sound like they would be the same. You know what I mean? But in Yu-Gi-Oh, it's just very super ultra specific. There's a concept of missing timing, right? There's a lot of things that go on with Yu-Gi-Oh, but it's all just, it's surface level. Because once you get over those humps, once you learn what those things are and what all those intricacies are, then the game itself is very simple. It's just like learning another language. You just have to learn all the rules for grammar and learn all like learn uh some phrases some good words and then everything kind of comes together and that's all it really is though and at the end of the day everyone speaks a language everyone talks to so many people talk to each other verbally right languages are not hard to like use right it's not hard to speak but it's hard to learn a language does that make sense that's like Yu-Gi-Oh. It's not hard to speak, it's not hard to have a conversation, but it's hard to learn a language. And that's like Yu-Gi-Oh. It's hard to learn Yu-Gi-Oh, but it's not hard to play Yu-Gi-Oh. Solo mode because I wanted to learn the game at a good enough level where I felt comfortable going against real players. And the solo mode seemed easy enough. I was winning basically everything that I did. So I felt very confident going into my first casual match. All right, let's find a casual <laughs> match. Let's see how this goes. He's got... What the hell is that thing? Chad, do I want to go first or second? Uh, I'm going to go second. I'm going first. First, always. Okay. All right, this is my moment to shine. If normal special summon, you can send one. Oh my God. The single player campaigns are pog. You should play those. No need. I'm about the game. Dude, stop. Like, <laughs> the single player campaigns are pog. Solo mode is literally just to get gems. I use it to practice new decks. But then, like, that's just you prepping... That's not you really liking solo mode. That's you using solo mode so that you can enjoy multiplayer better. Right? I personally don't give a fuck about solo mode. Single player. This is not arranged very well. It is not straight. And it is bugging the hell out of me. Player campaigns are pog. You should play those. No need. I'm about the game. I think that was a good play. Nice. Okay. Chat. Yeah. Yeah. He is going to explode by turn four. Yep. Play for him. Yep. Yep. That's your, that's the boy. That's the kid. All right. Then we do that. And then we do that. For the record, yep. I have no idea what I am doing, but that looked really good. Uh, Sure. Yep. That looks good. Yep. yep. Okay. Cool. Send Lorper. Okay. I'm going to go to the end, end phase. phase. Okay. I'm going against Yugi, chat. They really... <laughs> Great board. Very good board. Look, just look at 2700 beat stick and, you know, parlor, parlor set up. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah put me against the best game one what happens now what is that what is he Both playing can normal gear town ancient gear monsters for one less wow he's so good look at that he's just clicking yes to everything oh yeah of course 
He's 41 minutes into the game. But the game's over. Now, some of you might be a little bit confused on what just happened. And don't worry, it doesn't get any easier. You're going to be just <laughs> as confused it. as I was as I was playing it. I, it worked out, so we'll do it again. Okay. Oh, God, he's got an anime girl. Oh, my God. Look at the board. Yes. Oh, God. He's done this recently. Look, he has the trap trick sleeves. I don't know what's happening, but I'm doing stuff. Oh, yeah. Okay. Face up. Easy. Yep. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, did he did he buff his kitchen on turn one? No. <laughs> Wait, he buffed his kitchen turn one. But I'm yes. Oh god, he's got an anime girl. Oh my god, look at the board. Yes. <laughs> he used Ernest. No, he used Tinkak. I don't know what's Ernest happening, special summons oh, yeah? Tinkak. Okay. Oh off. my Easy. god, no. Wait, no, he used Ernest also to special summon another kitchen, which activated this turn. No. <laughs> it's so sad. It's so funny because he has no idea what he's doing, right? And why should he? Why should he have any idea? This game is so complicated. This is why, this is literally why Konami was like, you know what? Actually, we need a new game. We need a new game, guys, and uh, it needs to be a lot simpler. Uh, we're going to call it Rush Duels. <laughs> oh, actually, we're going to call it Speed Duels first, and uh, we're going to make Duel Links and see how that flies. Oh, that didn't work out? Okay. We have Rush Duel now. Yeah, we have Rush Duel. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> that's why. That's literally why. And that's why also there's no modern core Yu-Gi-Oh! standard anime anymore. Like the last one we've had was four years ago with Brains. That's why they're not going to make another anime. The twenty, uh, the 25th anniversary was like the only chance we would have got a new anime. They didn't do it. They instead said, we're going to Tokyo Dome, boys. And it's like, guys, like standard Yu-Gi-Oh! Standard, this Yu-Gi-Oh! This form of Yu-Gi-Oh! It's going to fall off. It's probably going to die in about maybe five, ten years. I'm just saying. Because Rush Duel will be the new thing. Oh my. You inspired me to play Mechrog yesterday. The anime is running out of ideas due to Kazuki Takahashi gone. No, that's not why. Guy named Joe. Konami would make standard Yu-Gi-Oh anime if standard Yu-Gi-Oh anime made money. If standard Yu-Gi-Oh! anime brought more kids into playing this this freak show of a game, then they would do it. Doesn't matter if Kazuki's dead. It does not matter if Kazuki's dead. They're still, do, still doing Rush Duel. They're still doing Rush Duel. They didn't start Rush Duel. They didn't start Duel Links because Kazuki died. They didn't do that. Right? They did it because the standard Yu-Gi-Oh! anime, Vrains, was a bomb. Arc 5 is not bringing in new players. They're not bringing in new kids because once kids actually do buy the cards and once kids actually do try and play this f***ing game, they get rule sharked and lawyered, right? And don't understand how to f***ing play. And it's really hard to understand how to play too because it requires so much hand-holding. It requires so much, like, explanation. So this game has no legs. It's not going to get any more new players. There's not going to be any more new kids buying the cards. It's going to die off in like 5 or 10 years unless they do make an anime. If they make an anime some sometime in the future, then whatever I say doesn't matter, right? But then the fact that they're not making any new anime means that Konami has no faith in standard Yu-Gi-Oh! And that they are... That the, the ship has sailed. They're done. They're done with standard Yu-Gi-Oh! They're moving on to different things. They're using the IP to make different things. Duel Links and uh, Rush Duel. You sound so negative. No one knows the future. It's impossible to predict these things. Well, tell me where I'm wrong. Like, tell me where I'm wrong. Tell me where my line of thinking is wrong. People have been saying that since Teledad format is still cookie kicking. Yu-Gi-Oh has the biggest YCS and Nats attendance in recent years. You... We need to bring that up. We talked about this, and we're going to talk about it again. This link... Almost 10,000 record-breaking duelists took part in the 2023 European Yu-Gi-Oh! National Championships. This is not one event. It's 20 national events across the entire continent. 
Not even 10,000, it was less than 10,000. This is also the first national qualifier uh, that it, it is socially acceptable to go outside and come out from your uh, COVID domes, right? This is super heavily inflated. These numbers are super inflated. They're not truly representative of how well TCG is doing. What, how well TCG is doing, we already looked at it. We're gonna bring up the numbers again. Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG, the last TCG thing got 10,000. Peak Yu-Gi-Oh! World Championship got 50,000. If you look at Decade, his channel where he restreamed the finals. This is the viewership of TCG OCG. All of this. It peaked at Master Duel. This is TCG OCG. It's even lower than Duel Links. I don't think Pokemon anime is as big of a draw now. It's not a draw to you. It's a draw for kids. You have more kids buying into Pokemon as a franchise, as an IP, it lives longer. Does that not make sense? You can see evidence of what you are saying just by looking at other games. While LOL are not bringing new young players in anymore, the population is generally older for these games. Yep, exactly. Because they don't cater to a younger audience. And if you're not catering to a younger audience, your game is going to die along with your audience. Right? And also, your audience is, is going to grow up. And unfortunately for maybe a harsh reality for a lot of you, but a lot of people acquire and attain new priorities that aren't just gaming, that isn't just playing card games, right? And so they move on. Yu-Gi-Oh! Market strategy is just weird. They keep branching off their main game to further split the little market they have. They're branching off their main game because they have no faith in it. You have to understand, like, it, you, you have to figure out what they're doing and reason as to why. Why are they making Duel Links? Why are they making Rush Duel? Why do they not make a standard Yu-Gi-Oh! anime? It all points to them saying TCG OCG is way too complex. We are not making any new players. We need to stop now because there's money elsewhere to be made. For the past three years, Konami has been putting out card sets that pay tribute to each of the previous six eras of the game, including Arc 5 and Brains. How exactly does that appeal to, idea appeal to kids? It's a simpler card game because the kids can actually understand how to play this game. Look at this. Kids can actually understand how to play this game. It doesn't matter. They're doing retrains of Arc 5 and Brains. It doesn't matter. They have an IP. Why would they waste their money trying to make new designs or oh, like going wildly different in a different art direction when they already have these designs ready to go and ready to reuse and recycle. That's not proof that they're not trying to cater to kids. It's just proof that they're lazy and they don't want to spend money designing new sh which makes sense because you're a business and you have all of this and standard Yu-Gi-Oh is not going to go anywhere. I don't get Yu-Gi-Oh fan base. They're all full of rage. It's just a card game. Play it if you like. Delete it if you don't. I do like it. What do you mean? Why can't I talk about like what I like about the game and what's going on with the game? Like nothing I'm saying is wrong. You guys are a lot of you guys are saying you're wrong. They're not like a banning standard, but they're going into rush duel. They tried making speed duels. They made duel links. They are branching away from standard Yu-Gi-Oh. They're not making standard Yu-Gi-Oh anime. They're not making standard Yu-Gi-Oh anime because kids are not willing to learn standard Yu-Gi-Oh. They're willing to learn rush duel though. That's why this exists. Why does this exist? You can't explain to me why this exists. If I remember, Rush Duel was kind of flopped in Japan, but that was years ago, though. It was years ago, because they just started. Like, this is still going. They made... Do you guys know that they made Go Rush? Did you guys even know that there's a standard Yu-Gi-Oh... This is... They have a Yu-Gi-Oh anime right now that's currently airing. And guess what? It's not standard Yu-Gi-Oh. It's Rush Duel Yu-Gi-Oh. Thing is, Yu-Gi-Oh in the East is still the huge phenomenon it was 25 years ago. The West is what's at risk, and we're seeing our biggest growth of tournament goers after over a decade. If Yu-Gi-Oh would have died, it died before now. It would have died before now? No, I don't think so. I think you guys are not understanding, like, the marketing appeal of anime, right? We talked about this at length. Look at any of the newer content creators, like me, like Nova, like Rena, like any of the VTubers that picked up this game, like uh, Saikuno, right? Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. 
right? Look at the category for Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. Every popular person that plays is a casual, right? Overwhelmingly, they're a casual. The top clips for Yu-Gi-Oh! are is all casual gameplay. It's all casual gameplay. Or it's someone restreaming the f***ing anime. This guy is literally restreaming the anime. This guy's literally just restreaming the anime. He's just rewatching GX and he's putting it under Master Duel. Okay? <laughs> Everything else, all the top viewed clips are very casual. And they're probably not even the main subject is Yu-Gi-Oh! Right? And all of these people got into Yu-Gi-Oh! because of anime. Because they knew what the anime was. They learned about Yu-Gi-Oh! from the anime. If there was no Yami Yugi, if there was no Atom, if there was no Exodia, these people would not be doing it. And so in 5 or 10 years, you're going to see Yu-Gi-Oh! drop. Because they're not sustaining itself. They're not creating a, a new audience. Standard Yu-Gi-Oh! anyway. Rush Duel, Rush Duel is where Konami is putting their, putting their eggs. Why is it so hard for people to understand that Standard Yu-Gi-Oh! is too high of a skill floor for beginners? I don't know. There isn't a right or wrong in this case. Only time will tell. Okay. So you can't tell me I'm wrong. That's fine. Makes sense. It's like, it's so funny. It's just like, okay, like, only time will tell or we'll see. It's like, okay, great. Yeah. I mean, of course. <laughs> it's like, yeah, the sky is blue. It's like, I have an opinion. I'm sharing it. That's fine. But if you don't have an opinion that is actually trying to explain how I'm wrong, I don't really give a f what your opinion is, right? If you're just going to say, well, time will tell and, oh, we'll see. It's like, you, do you don't know. And, you know, the, the future is like what it'll be, right? It's like, okay, yeah. And the sky is blue. Okay, yeah. And rain falls. Okay, yeah. Water is wet. It's like, okay, you don't have an opinion. Then stop sharing it. <laughs> if you don't have an opinion, don't share it. The biggest issue is how hard it is to get into the game so many mechanics. Yeah, we're going to see that with this video. Here, okay? All right, let's watch. I made it to plat for the first time ever. Thanks went 31 to 10 lol. Dude, no problem. Did I do anything good there? I'm assuming my play was excellent. Oh my God. I think I'm about to get cooked. Where's my cards? Where's his cards going? Oh God, what is he doing? Oh. I can't even read fast enough. What do you do? When your opponent <laughs> activates a card or effect you control, you can trigger one monster, okay? Okay. Oh my God, what is you got to read on? code exporter. Okay, you got to read code radiator too. Oh, what's this? At the start of battle, you can turn this card in your hand, and if you do, special summon them. Oh! You thought! What just happened? <laughs> what just happened? How do I. <laughs> Give me out. Yes. This game's f***ing over. This game's f***ing over. Okay, hold on. I need to pay attention. <laughs> so this is where you get. Dude, he just surrendered. Yes. To Deco Talker and one back row. Of course, yeah, he minus the sh out of himself, but. What just ha how do I. <laughs> Give me out. Yes. This game's Never over. Never thought I'd see someone over. make Deco Talker. It is funny because this is actually a casual duel. Okay, hold on. I need to pay attention. So, this is where you get your first real glimpse of how ridiculous <laughs> Yu Gi Oh can be. I played. <laughs> I can't, I can't get over the Tinkek and Ernest activations, dude. It's funny. All of those cards on my first turn. Let me show you what a typical turn one game of Hearthstone looks like. <laughs> yep, that's it. <laughs> and in case you're curious, this is what Rune Terra looks like. To be fair, I don't like Rune Terra as much because I do think that like there's way too much um like inner card text like what does bird the bell ringer do when i'm summoned plant a chime on the top card of your deck okay well then what is chime i have to literally click the card and then click this there's too many clicks to understand what a legends of runeterra card does i like the way hearthstone does it there's it's a lot more simpler it's like what the hell is this little hook what is this evolve what does evolve mean what does this hook mean right there's a lot that goes on in legends of runeterra and that's why i think it doesn't do very well now if you're very also the fact that you flip the attack coins and sometimes you can attack sometimes you can't it's like it's very very like hard to keep track of and understand for like most people there's a lot of system mechanics in legends of runeterra that i think 
goes over a lot of people's heads and that's why it's not as popular curious to see how pro Yu-Gi-Oh is played master duel has a very nice feature which allows you to spectate games let me show you what a pro level Wait, Yu -Gi -Oh! game looks like just some of spectate see how pro Yu-Gi-Oh what is played master duel has what I didn't know this was a thing what the f it's a very nice feature which allows you to spectate games. whoa games. Wait, I actually didn't know this was a thing <laughs> Let me show you what That's a cool. pro level Yu-Gi-Oh game looks like. To someone who does not play Yu-Gi-Oh, this is going to be one of the most ridiculous things you've ever seen in a card game. Unfortunately, I have to speed up the footage because <laughs> if I let it go, this player's turn took exactly three minutes. And it's at Emancipators. Won the game from turn one, and their opponent just had to sit and watch. And that is the most insane thing about Yu-Gi-Oh is that going first basically wins you the game based on your opening hand. And on in a lot of cases. Like, obviously he's wrong, right? Because in general, or like there are decks that can play second, right? There are board breakers, obviously. But you need board breakers. And you need to have those cards, right? You need to be able to have these kind of outs. Most games, on a general level, are determined by turn one um, or turn two. On top of that, this is the world championship for Yu-Gi-Oh. How insane is it that you work so hard to get to this point just to lose the game without <laughs> actually playing the game? Man, from an Yeah. I mean, he played Imperm. <laughs> Wait, but I mean, he played Imperm and he played like one other card, maybe. Yeah. To get to this point just to lose the game. Most games don't have Equalizer like Yu-Gi-Oh too. Well, they don't need it. Why, why do they not, why are board resetters like way high up in mana costs and why are they not as frequent in other games? It's because they don't need it to be. They don't need that card to be uh, available at lower costs or available to everyone. They don't need that. Right? It's because they, they, there's a back and forth without actually playing the game man from an outsider's perspective or someone just looking into this game like jesus christ like what i i, I can pause it but i don't think that's gonna help you use a patterns game you learn the combo pattern you understand the deck it's just like how the game is Wait, yep pause it pain help you use a pattern Yu Gi Oh is a patterns game learn the combo pattern you understand the deck it's just like that's how the game is yep it's just exactly how i said it Yu Gi Oh is like learning a language once you learn the language, you can talk, you can speak, you can conversate. That's easy. The, the easy part is playing Yu-Gi-Oh. The hardest part is learning Yu-Gi-Oh. Learning game, you learn the combo pattern, you understand the deck. Just like the just hardest part is learning a language. Shit. Let me get paint out. Okay, and I know some of you are going to be like, I'm coping, but here's the thing. The learning curve in Hearthstone is like... Something like that. Yu-Gi-Oh, yep. it's like... <laughs> so, I don't know how... That is pretty accurate. You lose brain cells playing. That's not what he's saying. He's not saying you, lo lo you lose brain cells. He's saying that once you get over this hump from zero, you have to know this to play this game and kind of enjoy and understand what the f*** you're doing. And then once you are doing it, yeah, you learn a little more, you learn a little more, you learn a little more. Okay, I understand how the language works. I know what the common phrases are, the words, the patterns. I know the grammar rules. Okay, I understand how the game is. Okay, yeah, you're just gonna uh, chain Havnus, mill three. Okay, you're gonna fuse. Okay, got it. Okay, I have my shark cannon. Okay, it's like, it's really like the game is not hard how? to play. It is hard to learn. People get past this line. No offense, but HS is a joke compared to Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't care if you're the biggest Yu-Gi-Oh fan on the planet. I'm not saying Yu-Gi-Oh is a worse game than Hearthstone, but purely as trying to get into the game. And this is coming from someone who's played multiple card games. This game f hard, dude. At least. Yeah, it is. Is that, is, is anyone, does anyone actually disagree with that? You, you guys want to see why or how Yu-Gi-Oh is hard to learn? Just look at what Konami's doing. You guys are seriously coping if you think Yu-Gi-Oh is easy to learn. Yu-Gi-Oh is not easy to learn. Most of the people that make content about Yu-Gi-Oh don't even know how the f***ing game works. They just play it. I really wish they had more in-depth tutorial on the game, like teaching how to chain block and other small things like that. See, yeah, that's the thing, right? Like, I always like to talk about, like, 
um, this incident that I had. There's one VTuber that I watch occasionally. Her name is Eclipse15. She plays Master Duel pretty well. She gets to Master Rank 1 all the time. And she plays in tournaments. She does very well for herself in playing events. I hopped into one of her streams, right? And she was trying to explain how can I chain block for Sprite Double Cross so that I can guarantee it resolves? Well, the answer is you can't. There's no simultaneous trigger when you activate Sprite Double Cross. Sprite Double Cross is a quick effect, and so because it's a trap, and so it starts a chain, right? And it can chain onto something, but as soon as you chain onto something with Sprite Double Cross, you don't just all of a sudden get to activate something else, right? But it happens on a chain, but it's an effect activation, it's effect resolution. So there's a lot of like, there's very little cases where you're creating the opportunity to chain block because you have to pass priority. The only times chain blocking is available to you as an option is when you have simultaneous triggers, when you have Segok. Simultaneous effects go on chain. Eclipse is a great player and she plays Yu-Gi-Oh very well. She understands a lot of the things very well, but Master Duel was her first entry into Master Duel. And even if she plays the game very well, there's just, there's virtually no way, unless someone explained to you how Segok worked, there was no way for her to kind of come into the conclusion on her own that Sprite Double Cross cannot be chain blocked. Do you understand? Like there's a lot of things you need to learn about this game that is really hard for players to learn without being taught, right? Whereas with Hearthstone, it's really easy. Turn one, play one mana card. Turn two, play two mana card. Turn three, play a two mana card and play one mana card. It's very, very easy. That just goes to show how hard it is to learn Yu-Gi-Oh. That just goes to show how accurate this curve is. It just goes to show that Yu-Gi-Oh is a very complex game to learn. And that's why you're seeing things like Rush Duel come out. It's a game that needs you to read up a lot and invest some time, but is that really a problem? Um, no, it's not. Like, it's not a problem. Like, Dragorify, I'm not ever saying, like, it's a problem, right? I'm saying that is what it is. So you don't, you and I don't disagree. It is what it is. Yu-Gi-Oh! is a very complex game to learn, and so it, com it caters to people who like to learn complex things. And that's great, right? But don't just sit here and pretend like this game is easy to get into. Don't pretend that casuals can learn this game and pick it up very easily. Don't pretend that Konami isn't literally putting their eggs in the Rush Duel basket because they see that standard Yu-Gi-Oh! has no longevity. Don't pretend that, like, we're gonna get another Yu-Gi-Oh! anime. Don't pretend that this, that this isn't copium. Don't pretend that this isn't copium. That this isn't copium. That this isn't copium. You're not getting a Yu-Gi-Oh anime. The 25th anniversary was the biggest opportunity. Why can't people have hope in a game that we enjoy playing possibly growing in the future? You can have hope. I'm just saying what my opinion is. And I invite people to tell me how I'm wrong. And if my opinion bothers you, you don't have to listen to it, right? I'm just saying what it is. And I don't think it's wrong for me to say my opinion. A lot of you guys are just saying, you're wrong, you're wrong. But really what you're saying is, I don't like hearing your opinion. Well, if you don't like hearing my opinion, you don't have to be here. That's all I'm saying. At least you can get Blue Eyes White Dragon on the side of your board, which is really cool. And with the help of my new dragon, I basically spent the majority of the second hour- World Legacy, Gardragon. Still learning the exact same deck until I felt confident enough to pick a brand new one. Which one is the easiest one to understand the game with? Okay, what, which one should I buy? Burning- These decks, by the way, they're so great to spam your crystals and turn them into UR cards. They're great for that as decks and i i hate that i wish they would at least be playable i wish they would be at least playable or if they could just make like a structure deck that was playable that had three urs just three just have three very playable urs but at least make it consistent don't make this stupid spirits i, right, I think he's gonna click the deck right Burning he's gonna spirits. click the deck right oh <laughs> this is easy if this link is summoned, you can target one card in your Okay. All right. Well, I'll trust you guys. Can, can now, you, you can you open deck? the deck with a new deck? Where at least make it consistent, man. Like, look at this bull. Like, all these cards are not good. 
at least make make another make it like a constructed structure deck premium super supreme or something and make it like consistent it doesn't have to be good but make it playable i would really rather konami did that i think they they should i think it's also that you aren't saying Yu-Gi-Oh can't grow you're just saying konami is growing rush Duel instead i'm saying it would take they're doing everything i'm i'm just stating a matter of fact like what are they doing what are they doing? I'm pointing out what they are doing. So, like, they could go back on it, and they could trash Rush Duel and be like, yo, wait, Master Duel's doing really pog, and maybe people are willing to learn this game. Okay, let's make a new anime. Sure, that could happen. I don't think it's very likely, though, because they are very... I think they're very dead set on the idea that the standard Yu-Gi-Oh game is way too hard for people to learn and to market to young children. You know what they should do? You know what they should do? You see this? Pokemon TCG. These are 2022, the World Championship decks. These are the decks that um, won World Championship. Now, they have different card backs. They have different card backs because they're not meant to be legal. Right? They have very expensive cards in them, obviously, and they're optimized. They're built optimally. But you could buy these products. They have different stylized card backs. They're not legal for tournament play. But you can learn how to play this game at a high level just by buying these products. And these products are like maybe 20 bucks. I don't know. Like maybe $10, $15. They're very cheap. They're not expensive at all. Like imagine if Yu-Gi-Oh had this. They literally sell you the winning deck for Pokemon. You can't play it in tournaments. You can't play it in official events, but you can learn the game through it. And that is beautiful. I think that's really good. And they should do that for Master Duel. They should make an event, literally, where they give you the WCS top decks of Jesse Cotton, of um, J Joshua Schmidt, and Quantle and everyone, they should make an event where they give you the WCS decks and they, you can play them against each other. And so you can learn the game on a higher level. And it's only available for that event. It's their loner decks and that's it. And it's only used to farm gems. That would be so great. That would be so great to help people learn how to play this game at a higher level. What gets people playing the game naturally is anime. What gets people interested and hooked into your IP, your franchise naturally is anime. A lot of us here know Yu-Gi-Oh only because we know this funny hair man named Yugi. Deck, I felt very overwhelmed on how I even began to get better at Yu-Gi-Oh. My chat was recommending that I get a coach, but I wasn't a huge fan of that because I was trying to do this as someone who is brand new to the game trying to learn Yu-Gi-Oh for the very That's great. Yeah. Very first time. Here's a yeah, that's great. His, his approach is super solid. He wants to learn what is the new player experience? This is a great case study. This is a great like sort of look into how someone can get into the game on their own. And the answer is, unless you have a YouTube channel with 157,000 subscribers and an audience watching your you probably aren't getting into Yu-Gi-Oh on your own. You probably would give up by the first duel. And so how do you get into Yu-Gi-Oh? You probably had a friend. Or you were probably very interested in the anime. It's a novel idea. Just find someone to teach you. Dude, that's, I'm doing this for a video, okay? So imagine I'm here like, hey, I, I'll listen. Now I got a teacher. So the, the whole video is gone. Basically, from what I'm understanding is in League of, League of Legends, at least, if you want to learn the game as fast as possible, you pick one champion and you learn the game from that champion. In Yu-Gi-Oh, it is easier to play the game through one deck and then learn the game from that deck. What I can't that is very true. Absolutely 100%. If you want to play and understand Yu-Gi-Oh, there are way too many decks to learn. You have to pick one deck and just stick with it. Absolutely, you just have to stick with it. Back the following day, one of my viewers messaged me on Discord with a meta deck of the cards that I just bought to hopefully let me play the game at a higher level and most importantly, let me understand how to play Yu Gi Oh! a little bit more. If I'm going to be completely honest, compared to a lot of other card games, I felt like I didn't even scratch the surface on Yu Gi Oh! There was so much to read, so many things to understand, and because the game just plays so much differently than every other card game, I was feeling so overwhelmed. Also, I learned that Yu Gi Oh! Doesn't Did he come really back have C? I don't know. 
rotation, they just ban cards. So there's 20 plus years of cards available in this format. The record by- Yeah, they are. There is no rotation. And that's actually the fact that there isn't rotation is part of Yu-Gi-Oh's identity at this point. I think people like the idea of their pet decks always being able to be played. It's a good and bad part about Yu-Gi-Oh! No Rotation. It's bad for competitive players, it's bad for people who care about winning, it's bad for people who are invested in the game as a strategy game. It is bad. But it is great for people who like to see their pet decks win, and that is that represents a overwhelming majority of players. Hey, it took us 40 minutes to craft the deck. I am now a master at this deck. Watch me roll these kids. I know how to play this game now. I studied a lot. Let me go first. Let me show you the power. There's like no mulligan phase in this game, right? Like magic nope. has a mulligan phase. Room terror. Imagine if you could mulligan in Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> Imagine if you can mulligan in Yu-Gi-Oh. Mulliganing in Yu-Gi-Oh would be so broken. It would be so broken. Do you know, like, how often Max C would be, like, present in every f game if you had Mulligan in Yu-Gi-Oh? God, that would be so cancer. It would be so disgusting how, how prevalent combos would work if you had Mulligan in Yu-Gi-Oh. It cannot, it cannot exist in Yu-Gi-Oh. You cannot have Mulligan in Yu-Gi-Oh because that will even go further to show how simple and how like watered down the game actually is on a fundamental level what is mulligan mulligan is in some card games you could uh draw your opening hand of five and you could be like okay i don't like this hand i will get one retry so i will take my hand i'll put it into my deck and then draw five cards fresh so in magic i think you open with seven cards so you draw seven you mulligan you draw another seven Okay, I don't like this hand either. You mulligan, you draw six. Okay, I don't like this hand either. You mulligan, you draw five. Okay, I don't like this hand either. You mulligan, you draw four, right? It's restart. It's restarting your opening hand. Yu-Gi-Oh being more cons- Just look at Runic. Runic is probably one of the most consistent decks. Do you guys like playing against Runic? No. Well, <laughs> imagine if mulligans were there, every deck would be in some cases like Runic, and also Runic would just be more cancerous, right? You would also see Maxi in pretty much every game if there was Mulligan. Era has a Mulligan phase. What is Hearthstone? There's there's no there's no Mulligan phase in this game. You just you just get your opening hand, right? Like I talked about it yesterday, or like the, the first stream of this game is that the learning curve for this game is ridiculous. Like it's it's actually it blows my mind that people like say to themselves in the year 2023, I'm gonna try out Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> like, it is amazing. It is absolutely it was it was astonishing to me that I found so many people willing to try out the game. Master Duel is doing very well for itself based off solely the fact that it has the anime and because it's very easy to get into. Like, as in, it's easy to get into monetarily. There's not a lot of time investment. You don't have to sell your soul like in Duel Links. So when the anime goes away, right, that's one reason to not play it. And for two... The free to play friendly part that doesn't matter if you never play the game in the first place or you're never interested in the game in the first place would you ever play like duelist duelist with the y would you play feria those are card games too why didn't you play those well because they didn't have an anime right if master duel wasn't a thing why didn't you play like magic the gathering or pokemon right like this game is so wild like I, like what the f Happening. Oh Even god, he's playing against Labyrinth, dude. I just realized. <laughs> oh man, he's about to get rolled. Oh, I was still very confused. I am about to show you the greatest play I made so far. Hold on, my extra deck is 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 uh, alive. It's time. We're in. Here we go. Okay. Finally, I play All right. the game. Uh, I'm not really yeah, sure what matters. Okay. Oh yeah, we're in. I played one card. He's about to play 30. Hold on. I wish there was a feature that showed me how much time they have played and how much time. <laughs> wait, wait, can I zoom in on this? Can we zoom in on this? <laughs> like, oh no. Do you see? How can you tell me this game is easy to learn? How can you tell me that this game is easy to play? Look at this chat, even he doesn't know. 
Even he doesn't know. Even he doesn't know. Wait, Dbeer doesn't block Link? No, it doesn't. It doesn't block Link. Even this guy doesn't. Even the guy he's playing with. Even this man who is totally clueless about the game does not know. His opponent doesn't know that this card does nothing versus Salamander. You cannot tell me this game is easy to learn. <laughs> Ket said, TBH. He could call Exceed to prevent Mirage Stelio. <laughs> He called Fusion! <laughs> I think you're missing some context. He knew DBR was useless, but he wanted to use Lady Effect to set a useful trap and use Clock. He didn't even chain Lady to D Barrier. He didn't know D Barrier was useless. He didn't. Played the game for about eight minutes, I think. And he didn't chain Lady! <laughs> he didn't chain Lady! He 100% thought that he could D Barrier call Link. Some people are like thinking about trying to use him as a case example. See, no, he knows what he's doing. Uh, this game is easy to learn. He, he knows what he's doing, clearly. He doesn't know what he's doing. From the field, and if you do special summon one link through monster or lower, while this card is co-linked, and co-linked monsters gain defense, also your opponent can't target any of them with card effects. You can target one link through monster. This special summon it to your zone. This card, you cannot special summon monsters this turn. Unless, it, does this count for two? Oh, it does. I still don't understand what the fuck's happening, but now we're gonna do this. <laughs> uh, I want you, and you're in. Wait, is he actually just gonna naturally make access code talker or like a link four by himself? That's actually pretty nuts. That's crazy. And then we get to do that again. Your opponent cannot activate effect or return response to this. If this card is linked, somebody you can target one link monster that we use material. All right, this card gains the attack and link rating. You can banish one link monster from your field and destroy one card your opponent also controls. Also, for the rest of the turn, you can't banish monsters with the same effect. Okay, I'm cooking. <laughs> what is that? What is he? What is he making? Let's go! Sheesh! He made it. He made yes. access code. Give me another one of these bitches. No, 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 no. no. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Um, you? I mean, my guy has so much attack. No, I don't no, think no, this no, matters. no. Like, do I need to kill one of these? Let's do that. He's so good. He's so good. He, he didn't walk in. <laughs> he could have. He could have popped. He could have tried to pop Lady. That would have been so fing funny. But he actually is doing the right thing. On. Do it again. Bye, idiot. Do it again. It's my game. I wanted to play. Get and he will never know. He will never know that Lady actually has protection. He will never know that Lady had protection because of the set cards. He will never know. And then when he tries this again, and he tries, he's like, oh, Lady's actually a threat uh, to whatever. He's, he's, he's not going to know. Country ass out of here. Is he having fun? Or he's going to pop fun? access Bye. Code. No! <laughs> I took too hard. Okay, we learned a lot. We learned a lot. Hard. You know what? It was a loss in the record oh, books. Oh no! But... And he surrendered out of like embarrassment, but he... too hard. Okay, we... he surrendered out of embarrassment. But look, this this card, this game state isn't like totally lost, right? Did he just search with Ariana? No, he already had the Ariana. This game state oh. isn't even totally lost. I took too he hard. pops lady okay, here, but this game isn't lost. He they're they're just in top deck mode, dude. <laughs> learned a lot. We learned a lot. You know what? It was a loss in the record books, but I I think I learned. Have you tried the story modes they teach you decks? No, nope, I don't uh, need to. To be fair, um, a casual player would try solo mode. A casual player would hop into solo mode and try to learn the game that way. I think. Like, if anyone was actually genuinely interested. I don't think they would just hop into Versus. I don't know. I'm not... I don't know. I think they would play solo. For my experience, I'm a new player from Master Duel who started last February. But I did a lot of research on my own, so it didn't take very long for me to, to gain a better understanding of the game. I've read countless cards, some of which I read more than once. Read various rulings, etc. Owning physical cards also helps. Yeah, well, I mean, so you've earned... You have the physical card game, right? You've probably seen the anime before, and as far as the Master Duel thing, you doing research on your own, that's not something a lot of people are going to do to play the game, right? Like, do you think 875,343 players actually did any research into what D&D 5th edition was, or like how to play a role-playing game? to play this game, right? Most people 
don't do that. Most people do not like research a game in order to play it. They'd rather just hop in and, and play the game. Hey, I, oh my God, <laughs> what? What the, f I still don't like, I, dude, I am playing cards and I don't know. This is so like, I, I just don't get what you learned from these games, man. Like, I guess what I'm understanding is that like, you could special summon all of your board in one turn and that's basically it. I wanna go first. I don't want my opponent to play the game. All right, we're going first. So that means- He's getting it. Wait, he's getting it. Did you hear him? Did you hear him chat? He said like, I don't want my opponent to play the game. Yeah, that's exactly what Yu-Gi-Oh is. Yeah, that's it. He, he's got it. I get to play the game, right? Oh yeah, this is good, this is good. Summon, yeah. He always used to go yeah. first. I want the gazelle. Okay. No. <laughs> Max C, just, can I, you throw me in? You, are you gonna throw me in right now? Right, how about now? <laughs> Dude, no way. <laughs> Mr. 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 Huge Jass, Mr. Huge Jass was like, you know what? You got it, dude. You opened, you opened your your starter card. You got it, dude. <laughs> you 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 got it, man. Now you got it. It's fine. I'm I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go play a game where I win the coin flip. Huge Jass knows what Yu-Gi-Oh is. He understands on an instinctual level that he is not going to be able to play the game if he didn't win the coin flip. And in a general sense, he's right. Summon? Yeah. Like, what? You're telling me people concede the game just literally based on the first two cards I play? Dude, you guys- Yes. Yes, a hundred percent. Yes, that's that's Yu-Gi-Oh. Need help if you play this game. Holy! Try try ranked. I'm a little scared for rank. Rank is fine until silver. What happens after silver? Is the game just over? <laughs> what? Oh man, there's just so much that goes into that. There's so much that goes into that because like, what kind of player says rank is fine until silver? Well, it's someone that enjoys Yu-Gi-Oh obviously very casually. And if they enjoy Yu-Gi-Oh casually, the reason why they're saying that is because they have a pet deck. If they have a pet deck, that's what they want to play. It's only really viable from silver and below. And so that's what he's saying. His message is that this game sucks when you're actually supposed to play the game itself. When you're forced to actually interact with the game itself and not wombo combo, do my flashy stuff, it's not good. That's what that person is saying. <laughs> Before we even get to ranked Yu-Gi-Oh, I want to just discuss how I feel about the game so far being about three and a half hours in. In my opinion, the tutorial of this game just isn't very great. In the other card games I have played, <laughs> the tutorial does a really good job of laying the foundation of how a game is actually- Dude, Hearthstone tutorial was so good. Hearthstone tutorial was so good. You could, you could teach a baby how to play Hearthstone. It is that- simple it's so great it's so easy to understand you only get the cards that you can play it ha it's very flashy you have this monster on the board you have the enemy in front of you it's such a good tutorial it's such a good tutorial to be fair you go tutorial will be 18 hours long since so they try to teach you everything yeah yeah it would you're right and that's why I've been trying to say, and what chat has been trying to tell me I've, I've been wrong about, is that this game is f***ing hard to learn. It's f***ing hard. It's not easy. Because there are a lot of things to learn. If I get to play my fun cheesy deck, I love the game. It's great. But if you're gonna stop me from playing my fun cheesy deck, f*** you. This game is garbage. I hate it. People play Yu-Gi-Oh! to play their funny little pet decks. Most people. Right from the beginning. This allows the player to enjoy the game on top of learning new decks, play styles, and just brand new cards that they haven't seen before without feeling lost and not really knowing what to do. But the tutorial in Yu-Gi-Oh! showed me the foundations of a game that was probably played 15 years ago. This does not help a new- <laughs> Yeah. This, 
This isn't Yu-Gi-Oh. Look at this board, chat. ...of a game that was probably... Played this isn't Yu-Gi-Oh. And to be fair, to be fair, this isn't really Yu-Gi-Oh or Hearthstone, but it kind of is. There are spells that do damage. There are monsters on the board. There are threats you have to handle. There is a hero you have to kill. Or without not but helping this, new player. You know what? I take it back. This is kind of representative of like Hearthstone. To a very to a certain extent. To a certain extent it is representative of what Hearthstone is. This is an, almost in no way. This is almost in no way representative of what Yu-Gi-Oh is. This guy doesn't even have an extra deck. I think the difference in opinion is more if it's a problem, if it's hard to get into. Everyone would agree it's not easy to learn and the in-game resources don't teach you the real game. Whether you like it being com complex, whether you like it being complicated is not something I'm arguing. I'm saying that that is not a popular concept. That it is hard for new players to learn and thus it is hard for this game to have its own legs and become more popular. Because it is. Because people don't like complexity. Right? You like it, and that's fine. That's great. I'm not t trying to tell you what to like or what you guys like or what to not like. I'm telling you that, yo, this game is, you know, probably on its last legs. And you're going to see Rush Duel be the main game moving on in the future. That's all I'm saying. Yu-Gi-Oh! is doing the best it's ever been because of Master Duel. It is solely because of Master Duel. And because it has a legacy of being a very good anime, right? That is why Yu-Gi-Oh! is doing well, and it is doing well. I'm not arguing that Yu-Gi-Oh! isn't doing well. Yu-Gi-Oh! is doing very well right now. But the success is going to be short-lived unless they make a new anime. Unless they make new anime, unless they try and bring more players. And if it's not short-lived, or rather if they don't do that, then what's going to be the new norm moving on in the future is Rush Duel. That's what I'm saying. I wonder how Master Duel is going to end up once Cash is in full power. <laughs> Dude, I told you, right? I went into like a VTuber's chat and she was playing Yu-Gi-Oh for the first time in like a, like a few, a handful of months. And people in her chat were like, oh no, oh no, my, oh, she's playing Yu-Gi-Oh? Oh no, no. Um, um, you know, XYZ VTuber, I'm, no, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh is not good to play right now. You, it's not good to play. Cash Tira is out. No, no, you don't understand. Cash Tira is out. You, you can't, no, don't, don't play Yu-Gi-Oh. It's, it's a bad time. Come, come back in like, come back in like a year. Come back in like a year. <laughs> Considering the advanced format as Yu-Gi-Oh identified for 25 years, I can only see Rush Duel in the same vein as one of Magic's alternate formats. I don't think it's, um, I, I, I understand what you're saying, Blaze, and that is definitely the strongest argument anyone has in favor of Standard, but I feel like it's ignoring all the telltale signs. I think you're, you're being willfully ignorant of what is, what Konami is doing and what they are, like, what works in a business. I think if you if you think Yu-Gi-Oh! Standard Yu-Gi-Oh! is going to last in the next past 10 years, I think you're being willfully ignorant of how a business works, how marketing works, and the fact everything that's that Konami is doing, everything that Konami has done thus far. I think you're being willfully ignorant of everything Konami has been doing thus far. This guy's name is Doomsday Cock, by the way. It's the same way with League. And guess what, Travis, right? Like, that's why they're making LOL Arena. A simpler League of Legends game mode that's easy to jump into with a buddy, that you're not totally team reliant, that you're going to rage on your teammates. That's why they're making LOL Arena. And LOL Arena is probably the future of League. Uh, if I'm being honest, like we could go into a whole discussion of LOL Arena, um, but that's not for this video. Uh, there's also TFT. That's why they're putting resources into TFT. TFT has so much content right now. It's insane. It is insane. It's not League anymore. They're moving. Riot is moving from League of Legends. Why would they move from League of Legends if League of Legends built them? Why would Konami move from standard Yu-Gi-Oh if Yu-Gi-Oh built them? 
because it's hard to make a new audience. It's hard to make new players with the base game. That's why they're moving. That's why they're trying to shift. That's why LOL Arena, that's why esports is dying. The bubble is popping. That's why they're investing into LOL Arena. That's why they're investing into TFT. They're investing into other projects. They're investing on an expanding the League of Legends universe into different uh, games and different IPs like Project L and why they're looking into putting more money into Valorant. It's because they understand that nothing lasts forever, right? Everyone here saying that Yu-Gi-Oh has survived for 25 years, you're not understanding that nothing lasts forever. And that if you don't feed something, it will starve. And when something starves, it will die. Eventually. You see Rush as an escape from advance where I see it as another gateway into it and that's our core disagreement. I don't think people are going to play Rush Duel and be like, yeah, let me just forget everything I learned about Rush Duel to learn this obscenely complex card game that's been around for 25 years that has so many mechanics that I don't want to understand when I'm already good at Rush Duel. I don't think that makes a lot of sense to me. If that makes sense to you, then that is where we disagree. And there is not a lot I can say besides that to convince you otherwise. I don't I don't see how people are going to be like, yeah, I'm very I'm pretty good at Rush Duel. Let me start try standard Yu-Gi-Oh! And then they hop into a game of standard Yu-Gi-Oh! and they're like, oh. On second thought, I was pretty good at Rush Duel. <laughs> on second thought, I was pretty good at Rush Duel. Let's let me just start. Let me just stick with that. Oh, there's more people playing Rush Duel now. Uh, let's let's just stick with that. Are we assuming people will want to play Rush Duel in the first place? I am not assuming that. I no, after 10 years, that will be the case. More people will want to play Rush Duel than Standard. Yo, that well, because when you go in to play casual mode, you are completely lost. The tutorial in Yu-Gi-Oh! made it seem like there's a lot more back and forth, and the game is a much more slower paced game compared to what it actually is, which is usually the game is over by turn one. Which leads... Maybe a new master rule to slow down the game and make it not so coin toss reliant and add best of three to master duel. You see, Vimto, they tried that. They tried that. They tried that with master rule four, which is new master rule. And then eventually, eventually link monsters became turbo. They realized that the people who play the card game the paper card game, they don't want a slower format. They still want their combos. And so they basically revoked Master Rule 4 in 2020 for Master Rule 5 and said, oh, guys, the link arrows, they weren't really working out that well. We we saw a lot of players like kind of drop the game and we're, we're bringing it back. You guys can fusion synchro NXT now. They tried that. <laughs> they already tried that. This is another telltale sign of what Konami is doing. They're trying, they're thinking, you know what? This game's a little complex. There's too much comboing going on. There's way too many sh going on in a single turn. Let's try and like slow things down. Let's, let's also try and like milk them for some money too. Let's make these new cards and make, make it so that everyone has to buy these fucking new cards in order to play the game. Right? Let's do that. And then they did it. It received a lot of backlash and. A lot of people, including me, dropped the game, and so they, oh, actually, you know, we're not making any more anime for standard Yu-Gi-Oh, so let's, uh, let's, y you guys can do whatever you want. You guys can do whatever you want. Leads me to my very first ranked game. What is this? This is when the ranked game starts, and this is when the ranked game ends. Ask yourself, how much time do you think- Wait, what? This, this is when the ranked- <laughs> Ranked game starts, and this is when- Okay, it was like 16 minutes. When the minutes. rank game ends. Ask yourself, how much time do you think I'm actually playing the game? Your attention span not be the best fit for Yu-Gi-Oh? I... <laughs> what? Your attention span might not be the best fit for Yu-Gi-Oh? As if all of you guys who play Yu-Gi-Oh, literally, when you don't win the coin flip, you're not literally just pulling out your phone and, like, doom scrolling Twitter or watching, like, something else. Or, like, watching a TikTok. Or, like looking at discord looking at your other monitor as if as if you guys are not aware that this game is a solitaire game <laughs> this game is a solitaire game your attention span might not be the best fit for Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> 
Everyone alt tabs out. I disagree, dude. His games are fucking over on. I don't alt tab out because I'm streaming. Turn one. From your main phase, you can take one Rick and monster from your deck, except Rick and pedal, and either add it to your hand or send it to the graveyard. Also, you can't special summon. When I'm playing Yu Gi Oh off stream, I'm like checking my email and shit. <laughs> like, I know that shit, there's not a lot of interaction. For the rest of this turn, except plant monsters during your opponent's end phase. Those cards in your graveyard. If you control the monsters at all, you control or you control plant monsters. Don't wear yourself out. Take a break with Hearthstone. You act like taking a break with Hearthstone's the way to go, bro. Okay, uh, how long is this gonna take? I'm gonna go get a drink while this guy's doing his turn. I'll come back and see what I missed. <laughs> Give me a sec, chat. He's playing against Rika. He's still. I've actually had, I've actually had like games where I'm like, let me go back, guys. Let me, let me, let me step out, guys. I'll be back. Cactus Bouncer. <laughs> what are our hand? I don't See, know. Raran made the critical mistake of not opening Max C and Ash Blossom. That's why he can't play. That's why he can't interact with anything on the board. Is because he he didn't he made the mistake of not drawing those cards hand traps are you guys care if i just uh, go to the washroom or something while this is happening like this is probably a good time right i got some time right how much time do you think i got for this turn chat a couple minutes you still doing shit. all right perfect team sam vid strikes once again yeah oh oh are we done all right oh wait hold on it's our turn i forgot yep it's our turn <laughs> When a card is activated, you can detach one material at the same time, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. Salaman Link Monster. Wait, hold on. I don't really. Do I have a way to negate this? Activate! <laughs> so, let me get something straight. Because this guy went first, he was basically able to set up his board to counter what I was doing, and I just had to idly sit by while he did that. Dude. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's. That's Yu Gi Oh! You didn't open Max Z. You didn't open Ash Blossom. Fuck you. Who plays this game? Like, you want to race or uh, meter He's sprint, learning. but then your opponent says, yeah, but I get to start 50 mi a meters ahead. All right, I think I lose. I don't know. Oh, wait, hold on. I should have done that. Like, can I even do anything? I guess not, right? I just end my turn. Pot of desires. Do... Pot of desires. You can draw. This and see what I draw. You messed up. I think I messed up by playing this game to begin with. <laughs> He's not wrong. Turn one, my turn. Turn two, our turn. Yep. To be fair, I admit this part of Yu-Gi-Oh is really annoying, especially against decks like Pendulums, Rika, staying there and watching the combo for minutes just to surrender on your turn because of full negates. Marion, you, yeah, you totally, like, I feel like there are a lot of things we agree on because I play the same f***ing game. I play the same f***ing game as you guys. You hate it when you can't combo and you can't play your deck and when you lose the coin flip because they've played their combos, they made their board, and they stopped you from playing. But you love the game when you can do your It's like, because that's what Yu-Gi-Oh is. Ryan's explanation is why I don't prefer older formats. The lack of agency galls me sometimes. You don't like older formats because there's less interaction? Do you like Maxi? Turn one, my turn, turn two, our turn. He went into the whole thing with a certain intention. I don't think so. You... you this guy is four hours in. Oh, uh, you no. messed up. I think this I guy is four hours in. Like, I don't think he came in with bad intentions. He came in pretty purely just like, I want to learn this game. And then he did it for four hours, and he's like, well, this game is really hard to learn, and it's not very friendly to new players. And he's not wrong. He's not wrong. He did videos before. I think he did, like, one video before, yeah. But I don't think there's anything he's saying here that is wrong. You would have to be a very dewy-eyed, like, Oh, I really loved Yu-Gi-Oh! as an anime, and, and I'm gonna, like, grit my teeth and re do my research and do my homework, and I'm gonna learn the game. I'm gonna be the best Yu-Gi-Oh! player ever. I think that's the kind of mindset you have to go in to actually learn Yu-Gi-Oh! like, fresh, right? Not the best duelist ever, but just, like, you understand that this game requires time investment that it requires research investment and the fact of the matter is not many people want to do that 
And it's no surprise. Why would I invest in a game to find out if I like it or not? If I can already determine within the first four hours that I don't like it. It's like, oh, you got to watch the whole anime. You got to no, you no, but you got to play the post game content to understand. No, I don't. No, I don't. The game was shit at the start. I, think I messed up by playing this game to begin with. Like, I probably could have played last year better. Wouldn't it be better to learn to play with another YouTuber? Dude, every time some of you, one of you recommends me, hey, Rare, maybe you should play with another YouTuber. That would help you. You hear how delusional that sounds? Hey, dude, in order for you to play this game, you need to get a coach. Yes, that is absolutely sad, right? For a game, that's absolutely sad. And I feel like it totally demonstrates how Yu-Gi-Oh, how unapproachable Yu-Gi-Oh is for new players. You're going to get in through your friend, or nostalgia, because your friend is going to teach you. And when the anime is gone, then the friends who teach you are gone. Then what are you left with? That's with every card game. So you have to catch up where everyone's at. I dude, you are coping out of your mind. If you think this, the learning curve in this game is not insane compared to other card games. You can literally, I can hop on Hearthstone right now and like make a deck or like as a new player, you could play casual. You could, you would have a game. If you hopped on Hearthstone with the starter deck and you hopped on casual, you would have a back and forth like game. You wouldn't have surrenders turn one. Like that's just not what it is. The learning curve is absolutely absurd. It's not the same. You can go on magic and play any of the modes that give you a deck. You would have a game. This may sound crazy, but to your solitary point, that's why I personally like Cash Tira and tier format because as a TCG player, it felt like a good format when you played the right decks. Yes. Well, I don't like the Cash Tira format personally, and I don't. I mean, I don't know the TCG Cash Tira, but like tier format and tier deck, I loved it. I loved it. I came back to streaming Yu-Gi-Oh because of tier limits. I loved it because they forced. Because what does tier limits do? Tier limits play on your opponent's turn. They're also not one dimensional. They're not um, like super one track like Fluanderese. They have a chance to do certain things and they have to react and react accordingly depending on what they mill, what they, what they hit on the mills, right? So like tier limits forces interaction. It forces a dialogue between two players. It creates turns within turns and it's not all the same. It's not all the same. That's the beauty of tier limits. That's like the closest thing to interaction in Yu-Gi-Oh. It's why I like the deck so much. It's why I like the format so much. It's why I will stand by and say, yeah, tier limits format. I love that. Sh I love it personally. I understand it's not objectively a good thing, especially for a lot of players and casuals because they don't like one deck formats and they don't like um, interaction. They don't like that, right? They like playing their combo and letting that combo go uninterrupted. The typical Yugi boomer, the typical Yu-Gi-Oh player, all they want is for them to do their combo and not for their opponent to do their combo. And God forbid if anyone tries to interrupt their combo because that is unfun. Because any sort of dialogue between two players, like, come on, dude, it's my f turn. Our turn is like the most hated meme in Yu-Gi-Oh! Because why would you want a game that's not solitaire? Obviously, if I'm playing Yu-Gi-Oh!, I want to play solitaire. People hate good cards. The ideal game of Yu-Gi-Oh! in the eyes of somebody like that is someone summon a huge vanilla set one card and swing for damage. It's not summon a huge vanilla set one Master Blaze. It's... Can I do my Adagnister? Can I summon the Arrival Adagnister? Can I summon Avermax? Can I make um, my, like, do the Chaos Max OTK? Can I uh, do my Pendulum Summon and summon, like, three Arc Pendulum Magicians of Chaos? Whatever the f*** that guy is that's an Omni Negate. You know, it's like, that's typical players. It's not about um, big Timmy monsters. It's about... Big Timmy boards and Big Timmy combos. <laughs> Out of curiosity, how long did it take you to feel comfortable with Runeterra? Probably like in two games. Because Runeterra, thankfully, is super easy to get into because the cards don't read like this. This I don't agree. Um, yes, Runeterra, card for card, they're easier to read. 
I don't think Runeterra is an easier game to get into. I think the mechanics are unnecessarily uh, a little too complex. There's a little, like, if Yu-Gi-Oh! is on one end of the spectrum where it's very much a one-player game and you kind of, like, take turns playing that game, right? If Yu-Gi-Oh! is on one end of the spectrum, Runeterra is on the whole opposite end where there's a little too much interaction and there's a little too much passing of priority. There's a little too much passing of like, can I summon? Okay, you can summon. Okay, now I can attack. Okay, well, I can block now. There's a little too much of that. It is fun. It is a good game, but it is unnecessarily mechanically, the system mechanics are a little too complex for new players to understand. And uh, the cards themselves, I, I hate cards where they require you to click two or three times to understand what the f*** they do. I, I think that is a critical flaw in Legends of Runeterra. I also think that's the same exact flaw that Shadowverse has too. It's where it requires three to four clicks, two to three clicks, whatever, to understand what a card f***ing does. Uh, so Yu-Gi-Oh, Legends of Runeterra, Shadowverse, they all have their trade-offs. I'm not saying Yu-Gi-Oh game and that it's it's only and it's there's nothing good about Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh has a lot of good things going for it. It caters to a specific crowd. It has positives, of course. And other games have their negatives. And one of the negatives for Legends of Runeterra is there are too many cards within a card and the system mechanics are a little too back and forth and it's a little too complex. Remember the two reasons to play Master Duel. Nostalgia and free to play friendly. What does Runeterra have? Runeterra has one of those things. They have free-to-play friendly. They don't have the legacy. They don't have the nostalgia of Master Duel. And so what happens when um, Yu-Gi-Oh, the franchise, when the standard Yu-Gi-Oh, when they're not playing standard Yu-Gi-Oh? What happens to the franchise, the IP, when there is no anime of them playing standard Yu-Gi-Oh anymore, when they're only playing Rush Duel? Well, then Master Duel loses the nostalgia factor. And if, if Master Duel loses the nostalgia factor, then all they have is being free-to-play friendly. And if all they have is being free-to-play friendly, but it's unnecessarily complex on the same level as Legends of Runeterra is, well, then you have Legends of Runeterra. And Legends of Runeterra, let me tell you, they're not doing that hot. One card is like three Runeterra cards. And this card also combos with this card and this card and this card and this card. Magic for me was easier to understand because at least there's the basis of the mana system and that you can understand why uh, how other cards work because there's not an eight amount of cards being played in one turn. Like not like how many cards does he have to read here to understand the game? Yugo didn't become one of the big three without having ground to stand on. Clearly there's something magical about Yugo that we can't attribute to just one thing. It's anime. It's anime! It's anime! It's anime! I'm gonna say it until I'm blue in the fucking face. It's anime! It's fucking anime! It's not like it's not some secret sauce. It's not like something crazy. It's not magic. It's anime. You were marketed to from the beginning. You were marketed to as a child. You're you asked your parents to buy cards to buy the toys. It's anime. It's fucking anime. It's not a mystery. It's not a mystery. When anime is gone, Master Duel will fade in 10 years. That's a long time, to be fair. Maybe that doesn't matter to some of you people. And of course, that doesn't really matter to a lot of people. But I'm just saying that's what is going to happen. <laughs> it's... That's what is going to happen. It's anime. <laughs> Having a resource system in this game is the weirdest conundrum for like any player who hasn't played it because every other game, every other card game has a mana system or some kind of resource system. Hey, Rare. Magic is like the only one that got big just by being magic. All the other paper card games are anime. Exactly, some of them, but like exact, like just analyze exactly what you're saying too, right? Because magic is the OG. Magic created trading card games and collectible card games and battle card games as a genre it heralded its its coming it was the one that did it right whether it was the first one or not i don't fucking know but it was pretty much the first one to do it right it heralded it it created it it birthed it into existence it created Yu-Gi-Oh and pokemon tcg magic created pokemon tcg and Yu-Gi-Oh. And so it is the only one that can stand on its legs by being a card game because it actually, like, did it. 
I hate reading cards too. I do hope that OCG structures. Does people not know that this card game is from the anime series? <laughs> it's the anime that pulled me in, the nostalgia? Yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh! become a cultural phenomenon through the anime. Have you any idea how many Yu-Gi-Oh! players have not seen anything after Duel Monsters? If it was the anime, the game died in 2019 with friends. But Blaze, you literally say it. You literally say it, Blaze. They saw Duel Monsters. Duel Monsters was the best season. It was the best anime. It was it was the one that everyone remembers. It's the one that everyone has nostalgia for. You are saying it's anime. It's Duel Monsters. And you make more people, you make more audience by keep on releasing, by continuing to release anime. You continue to release anime, you still build more audience. Maybe it's not the biggest thing, maybe it's not as big as Duel Monsters, but you are still sustain you are still creating new people to buy your product by making more anime. It is the anime. I got into Yu-Gi-Oh! not because of the anime, but Tag Force One game. Okay, sure, that's you. I, I don't think that's a that if you think that's the majority, I think that is where we disagree. I think that is where we very highly disagree. Tag Force 1 game, how many people are playing Tag Force 1 right now? Or like how many people bought into the game without knowing the anime? Why did they buy Tag Force 1? Why did most people buy Tag Force 1? It's the anime. It's always the anime. How was your how was your gameplay of Yu-Gi-Oh today? Oh, I don't know. I watched my opponent play for 10 minutes and I was sitting there waiting. <laughs> He's still going. <laughs> He's so still going. Ridiculous, dude. I don't know how I'm going to play this for six more hours, if I'm going to be honest. Like, what? I think that game went on for, what, 13 minutes? I think I played the game for 20 seconds, maybe. Somewhere around there. I'm going to be honest. I don't think I want to play this game for 10 hours. The reality of the situation is... Oh my god, does he actually stop? Does he actually stop? That's really funny. That's really funny. Do you, you guys can't tell me he came in with, like, bad intentions. This guy was trying to play for 10 hours. He was trying to give it a fair fucking shot, okay? He even, like, took a viewer's deck that DM'd him on Discord. I don't look at any of your guys' fucking DMs. So many of you guys fucking DM me and like message me random ass shit. I don't look at any of them because a lot of you guys some of them are weird and it's like I, I need like he even took a random viewers random DM to try and learn a deck and play the game like that is insane he's gonna quit he's gonna he's not gonna play and I don't blame him is after playing a game for four hours and 10 minutes, I'm not really having any fun. Unless I'm missing something that I don't think I am. Like I, I played a good, I, apparently you guys gave me a deck that was probably good. I tried the tutorial. I tried- It's not that great, but- Casual mode. I tried ranked. It's just, it's th this game is not for me. I am missing something that has made, is gonna make the game more approachable. It's not, it's not. If you didn't get into card games, listen chat. If you guys didn't get into card games, through Yu-Gi-Oh, then you wouldn't be playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, does that make sense? What I'm saying is like, if you came into card games by learning other card games, there's no way in hell you're gonna wanna learn Yu-Gi-Oh. There's just, there's very little shot. Very little people are gonna come from other games to play Yu-Gi-Oh. Very little people. Unless they watched the anime and they were in love with the anime. You're wrong, you're so wrong. Tell me how I'm wrong. Why would you want to learn this crazy complex game? Why would majority, I'm sorry, not why would you. Why would the majority of people want to learn this crazy complex game over their home card game? Pretty much, you can play Yu-Gi-Oh! and jump to other card game, but it's not the other way around. It's very unlikely that it's the other way around. That is what I'm saying. I think Magic is a lot easier to get into, but I feel like Magic the Gathering Arena is way too money hungry that it's hard for new players to get into it, for sure. To be fair, after a while, he was so focused on finding flaws that he didn't even try to win. He would leave to prove a point and then complain when he got negated first play. But that's valid. Because no other card game works like that. What in this video do you think doesn't represent genuinely a new player's experience. 
If you like card games, you have a very good chance to get into Yu-Gi-Oh! or other TCGs. Why? Can you explain why? You're just saying, well, you know, I think the sky is green. Because it is, it's green. That's, it's, it's just that. And it's like, well, I think it's probably a little more blue. You know, you're just saying, you're just making declarative statements. You're not backing anything up. You're not explaining your logic, your reasoning, your understanding. Why? Why? Why do you think that? Honestly, I know what Iran means. Four hours into the game, you still have not a single clue what's happening. Four hours into Hearthstone, you pretty much know everything there is to know. You don't know everything there is to know, but you have your feet, like, on the ground, right? You can walk. You can conversate. If you play four hours into Hearthstone, you know what's... You have a very good general understanding of what's going on. In Yu-Gi-Oh, your general understanding of what's going on is... Did I win coin flip? Yes? Oh, I can play. Did I win coin flip? No? Oh, I can't play. Did I win coin flip? My opponent drops max C? Okay, I'm gonna play. Oh, I lose! Oh, that's weird. <laughs> I'm glad Ran Ran decided that it wasn't for him. But I was on his stream, so I don't know if he was talking down Yu-Gi-Oh for not being like other games. I mean, you can... His opinion is valid. He doesn't have to like Yu-Gi-Oh. And he can talk down Yu-Gi-Oh to his audience all he wants. Because that's his opinion. Right? Like, are we gonna, like, say f*** you, Ranran, Ran, for having an opinion? He doesn't like Yu-Gi-Oh. That's valid. This game isn't for everyone. I think we all can, we all know that. We all understand that this game is not for everyone. I think people pulling you in 70, 70 different directions. No, dude, see, the thing is, is like, it's not because chat's telling me that I'm doing something wrong or whatever. I just think the game is too f***ing hard to just wrap my head around and actually enjoy the game. I play- Yeah, no, 100%. Like, he needs to stop streaming and he needs to, like, sit down and like play through all the tutorials and he needs to find a friend to actually teach him how the game is actually played after that that's what he needs to do t in order to learn and understand and play this game and you know what that's a ridiculous ask can we all agree that's not very sensible that's not a great new player experience it just isn't he needs that in order to learn and play and understand the game Play Hearthstone because I think it's the most fun card game, right? I don't think Hearthstone's the, the best card game in the world, but I personally enjoy it the most, right? When I played Hearthstone 10 years ago, when I played the game for 20 minutes, I was like, I'm going to like this game quite a bit. Yu-Gi-Oh! does not give me the same vibe. Play the game for four hours and 15 minutes at this point. And I'm, again, like I said, I played it. I got to learn math. I got to, what, 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 what's a Sigma? <laughs> Previously, last year, I gave it a try. I just don't have that sense of enjoyment, right? There's too much going on. It's not fun to play. It's going to take me another six years to figure out what every deck does. Also, apparently going... It's not going to take six years, but it's going to take like a few weeks, you know, a few weeks at least. And you would have to grind it, okay? You would have to grind it on your own, doing research to understand and play this game at a level where you are satisfied as someone who's power gamed in other games like Hearthstone. You would have to do that. And I understand, at least, how ridiculous that sounds. And so I wouldn't wish it on anyone. <laughs> going first is just fucking broken. If going first is so strong, that means half the game, half the time you're not even playing the game. In Hearthstone, if I'm playing a game, even if my opponent has a slight advantage going first, at least I get to play the game. At least I get yep. to do something that my deck does. I'm Without playing a blind second deck, right? So like everyone in chat probably right now is thinking like, oh, we'll you just play Sky Strikers and you, you can lose the coin flip. And I mean, even if you lose the coin flip, you win the coin flip. You can, you can play going second Sky Strikers. You can play blind second Sky Strikers. Um, well, the only reason I can play blind second Sky Strikers, guys, the only reason I can play blind second Sky Strikers is because I have two dark holes destroys all monsters on the field. I have two Raigekis destroy all monsters your opponent controls. I have three Lightning Storms destroy all attack position monsters your opponent controls, destroy all spells and traps your opponent controls. I have 
Curry Kara Div Incarnate, which basically says I can destroy all their monsters and make a big monster and take their monsters from the graveyard. I have all these board resetters. The only way I play a blind second deck that I can play something that is built to go second is if I play 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. A fourth of my deck has to be dedicated to board resetters. It is the only way you can play well going second. Or you luck out and get maxi. If you like it, you're a Yu-Gi-Oh player, great, that's valid, that's you. But I'm saying from a perspective from Raran, from someone who comes from other card games, that perspective is totally valid. I don't want to have to play all these board resetters to be able to play second turn. I don't want to have to, like, have Maxi in my hand or Ash Blossom in my hand to have a chance of playing second. I don't want that, right? Raran doesn't want that. A lot of players don't want that. They want to have an idea of their deck, um, some kind of winning strategy, some win condition, some funny little combo, some funny little like plays that they can do, and have a good chance of doing that in every single game they play that isn't determined by a single coin flip. And I think that is very reasonable first at least i get to play the game at least i get to do something that my deck does i'm gonna be honest i don't know how anybody plays this if i need to get a fucking coach to understand Yu-Gi-Oh, just to enjoy the game not even to be good at it i don't think this game's worth playing 10 hours for so if you guys play Yu-Gi-Oh and you like the game awesome i'm so happy for you keep on playing Yu-Gi-Oh. honestly the only part i really enjoyed was getting my blue eyes white dragon because at least he looks cool See, that's the thing. With Yu-Gi-Oh, there's always a hook. There's always a hook. The hook is either an anime, the anime, or which is the nostalgia hook, or the friend. With Hearthstone, there is a hook somewhat, but the game stands on its own. With Magic, the game stands on its own. Hell, it created card games to begin with. With Pokemon, the hook there, it's kind of similar to Yu Gi Oh! Honestly, there's a hook, right? There was a there was an in, which is anime, right? With Yu Gi Oh! That is very much the case. The game on its own is way too hard, way too difficult, way too new player unfriendly to understand and and have fun with. You have to have these hooks in order to learn, want to learn the game. I totally agree with this video. I, uh, you know, even as a Yu-Gi-Oh player myself, I play Yu-Gi-Oh. I play Master Duel. My main content is Master Duel. I love Yu-Gi-Oh. I would be happy to teach Raran, but I don't think he would want to learn like Yu-Gi-Oh through me. Um, this was a great video. It was a great look into the mind of someone that is totally f***ing casual and that is trying to be a new player, trying to, you know, see what the game is like from a new player's eyes. I think it was a very good look into that. And I totally recommend this video. I, I like it a lot. So there you go. That's the video link. Uh, make sure if you guys enjoyed it as well to uh, click on the video link and like it as well. Uh, I would definitely like to see more videos from this guy if he has like, if he plays other card games. I definitely, I agree with everything he has said in this video. Absolutely everything. And I still play Yu-Gi-Oh. I still like Yu-Gi-Oh enough to play Yu-Gi-Oh and I can agree with everything he's saying. I can agree with everything he's saying. I can understand and see where he's coming from. And I will still play Yu-Gi-Oh. And I will still like Yu-Gi-Oh as much as I do. This video is just Master Duel needs best of three like a real game. No, it's not. Koja, no, it's not. This game is not Master Duel needs best of three. This, this, video, this video is not just Master Duel needs best of three. This video is saying Yu-Gi-Oh is a f***ing hard game to learn for new players. And that's it. And that's it. And it's a very simple message, and it's a very good showcase of that. You don't need a coach to learn Yu-Gi-Oh, but you for sure do if you're trying to learn in less than 10 or less hours. Yeah, anyone can Google. Anyone can Google and read and, and struggle on their own and do research, Master Blaze. I, I don't... I do not, like... Of course I'm not going to say that's wrong. If you want an enjoyable experience to learn Yu-Gi-Oh, a coach would help you out a ton. That's why I prefer people learning harder deck in Yu-Gi-Oh so they understand the real game faster, something like D-Link. 
Steel Link is not, like, hard. It's like, it's, I will say it now, I will say it all the time, I will say it time and time again. Learning Yu-Gi-Oh! is like learning a language. It's hard to learn the language, okay? Learning a deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! is also like learning a language. It's hard to learn the language. It's easy to conversate. It's easy to speak. Once you've learned the language, it's easy to talk. It's just hard to learn the language. And that's... I think that analogy works perfectly for Yu-Gi-Oh!